Hey everybody, welcome to our live shoot. We've been filming a Christmas daily challenge all week. Me, Leanna, and Faith, and that's why it looks like Christmas behind me, but actually the season and holiday that is closest to us is Halloween. So I'm gonna take one of my favorite classes on Creative Bug, which is Amy Carroll's clothespin doll class, and I'm going to make it into a Halloween version. I'm gonna be gone for most of the October month, and so I really wanted to do an opportunity, have an opportunity with you guys to do one Halloween craft, so this is the one I'm bringing to you. You are never too old to make a clothespin doll or even play with a clothespin doll, let me tell you, because they're one of my most favorite things to make and even to play with. So to make your clothespin doll, you're going to need a clothespin or wooden peg. There are two different kinds that you can get at the craft supply store. There's this round version and then there's a flat version and either one of these will work and I think it's nice to actually do a variety. And the first thing I like to do is paint the wood because it makes it easier to draw the face on later. And even the most adept painters, this is really, really tiny and so drawing the face as opposed to painting the face is much easier, I find. I'm just using some acrylic craft paint in whatever color I wanna make my doll. I'm just using a one inch craft brush. Anyone will work. And then I often like to paint the legs so I can make sort of tights. So I'll just pick a new brush so I don't even have to rinse mine out and just paint these. If you're working with kids on this project and the paint is too messy, then you could use marker pens for all of this. And we're gonna set that aside to let it dry. Luckily, I have a bunch that are ready to go. So once my paint is dry, I like to draw the little face. We'll start with, um, let's do like a more, let's do like a little face on this guy. So I'm using a Micron pen. These are nice because they come in different tip widths. Um, they're permanent ink. And I, like I said earlier, the reason I paint first is because then the ink doesn't feather into the wood. And so I like to do my painting first and then do my drawing. To, to make these little marks where the mouth is going to be. Do some eyes. And then for some color, you can use a jelly roll pen or I really like these Posca pens. I like this neon color. to do the mouth and the cheeks using this. Now this isn't super spooky just yet. It may be cute Halloween, but I thought we'd also try like a skeleton version. If you're working with the round pegs and you're gonna start by doing the face, make sure that you have it rotated so that you have like a left and right leg. You can also start drawing on this and then you don't really have the legs. You just have this full width of a peg. So I like to just make sure. And if we want to make this a little more spooky, let's make it more like a skeleton. So that nostril opening, those big eyes. I still want it to like kind of have some life, so they'll be like eyes and not just eye sockets. And then maybe your sort of like traditional skeleton mouth. Should do some like cheekbones here. So you can see how much easier it is to use a marker pen than painting on something like this. You could do like a little crack in the head. It's a little skeleton face. And then the best thing about making clothespin dolls is 
Whatever you want to use pretty much goes. You can use washi tape, paper, felt, scraps of fabric, bits of yarn, roving, ribbons, anything you want. And you only need very tiny amounts. So this is a perfect project as a stash buster. It's also great to just like sit kids down at a table full of just random little bits and bobs and just let them glue anything onto their heart's content. I like to use tacky glue for most things. If you don't want to glue things, you can also just kind of tie things. So I'll tie fabric on with bits of twine or ribbon or what have you. So let's see, what do we want to start with? I think the hair gives a lot of personality, but I may not start with the hair. I may start with the outfit first. Also really love to use tulle and you can get tulle in all these different styles now. I picked out some that feel a little bit more Halloween-y. It's my bigger scissors. If you guys have questions, let me know. Faith is here typing away, moderating. Hopefully she also posted a link to Amy Carroll's class. You should definitely check out Amy's class, it's so fun. So I've got all these little bits of tool. Let's use some of the black tool, I like this. So this is gonna be our skirt maybe. Ooh, she looks very witchy, I love that. Okay, so what I'll do is actually cut this down. And because the tool has such an open weave, instead of sort of trying to glue it down, which would be really hard with all of this open weave. I'm actually gonna just kind of stick it in the middle. So I've folded the tool in half. I'll cut a little bit of an opening to fit my clothespin or peg doll in. And then I'm just kind of gonna gather it and cinch it around the middle. And then we're gonna use a little bit of twine to keep this in place. And then you could glue that twine and really have it be super secure if you're using these to play with and not like just as a decoration. So wrap it around and this will be like her belt, her witchy belt. Do a double knot. You can always trim things down later, but I like it kind of. Ooh, yeah, I like that. And then, so for her top, you can actually use washi tape if you wanted to do that. Can I see? Yeah, that's cool, I like that. I might want to trim out a little V, so it gives it a little more clothing personality. Get that V as centered as possible. You can also, so at this point I would wrap this around, but if you want to make kind of like little kimono arms, you could also just put a second piece of washi tape on the back and then trim it. I can show you what that looks like. I don't think I'm going to do it for this, but I can kind of mock it up and then we'll cut it away just in case you want to do something like that. So what you would do is try to line it up as best you can. It might be easier to start like this. So run your washi tape along the back and over and along the sides. And then you have kind of these arms and you could kind of cut into them um, and make like little flare sleeves or something like that. For this, I don't want to do that. I just want to keep it like a bodice. So I'm, I would normally just wrap it around, but in this case, I'm just going to trim it right to the edge since I showed you that other technique. And the great thing about washi tape is it's going to stick on its own. I don't need to use any glue, so that's fun. Okay, I like how she's looking. I think it's time for some hair. The hair is my most favorite part of all of the, this whole project. Roving is my favorite thing to use for hair, but I also really like pom-poms. So these pom-poms look awesome as hair. Ooh, that would be really cute. Okay, let's try it out, that one or we could just do like a single. She could have, she looks like a Giants fan if we do this. San Francisco Giants fan, but that's very Halloween-y, I like that too. But the roving is my favorite, so. Roving is what yarn is made out of. You can also use it for felting, and you usually can get little bits of it in lots of different colors in the craft store, and then if you go to a specialty store, they might have bigger balls of it but you don't need a lot for this. You can also use yarn. Um, what kind of hair is she gonna have? I do one of 
like I said, we've been doing these ornament challenges all week for the holidays and I do a sugar plum very, fairy version and she had a top knot today so I kind of want to do a top knot. So for that we're just going to take our roving and make a knot. And then this can sit on her head and then you can kind of like bring this down on the sides. Let's flare it out a little bit. So you don't want to yank really hard but you can really manipulate this if you're gentle. Yeah, that's cute. So we're gonna use our tacky glue. Tacky glue works really well for a lot of things. It's nice and thick. It's gonna dry clear. We've been using it all week. And if you've never seen Amy Carroll's clothespin doll class, I highly recommend that you check it out. We're probably running a promo so that you can watch that class. Are we doing a Joanne 30? you guys do Joanne 30, then you can get 30 days free of Creative Bug and you can watch Amy Carroll's Clothespin Doll class, some of our other fun Halloween decor classes. All right. Oh, it's my pin to put back in my tacky glue since we lost the top. So this is going to be her top knot. Kind of like it to one side, kind of like swept over, so I might twist it. Yeah, that's cuter. Like I said, that'll dry clear while it sets up. Oh, I love that. It's so cute. So cute. I love it. <laughs> what else do we want to add to her? She's so fancy. I have some um, cool pipe cleaners that I think are nice and fun. Halloween feeling. Could do something where you have arms for this. But then we need to hide them. Pipe cleaner could be good. Ooh, let's have it a sequin. I love sequins too. It's a really big sequin, but it's the pink or the orange one. Oh, let's put it in our hair. This is why this is so fun. Like just a single sequin makes such a big impact because it's a clothespin person. She's like a little hat on. Okay, let's leave her aside and let's work on our skeleton. We'll make him like a little jacket maybe. So felt is cool for this or fabric. I'm just gonna cut off a bit of this. So for this, let's make him a jacket. And it's kind of like what I showed you with the washi tape arms where you kind of take two layers and sandwich them together. We're going to do the same thing on this. But we're going to start with just a strip. So this is a little over an inch, maybe an inch and a quarter, an inch and a half. And Instead of the center, we're going to kind of fold it in half and then the center of that. I'm going to make a little bit of a divot, just like I did with the washi tape to be, it's to kind of indicate the front of the garment. So it'll go down like this. This is very kimono style, but you know, these are clothespin people, so it works. It's like a spooky, he's spooky. Oh my God, a bat would be so cute. <gasps> have black felt we could have made him a bat all right just so that everything lays nice and flat I'm actually just gonna trim this because I want them to be the same size and then what you're gonna do is just apply some tacky glue all along this you can also use felt glue felt glue works really well for felt as it sounds it doesn't feel like it's gonna stick but it actually works even better than tacky glue sometimes um, but I have tacky glue and I'm just gonna use that for everything Again, hot glue for this makes things kind of stiff, and if you're working with little kids, then they're definitely gonna burn their fingers, so I like the tacky glue. Kind of center him, and then you're just gonna, ooh, let's bring him down a little. And you have some working time. 
And you know what? I also want to glue a little bit on the front just to hold this front layer of felt in place. And then we're just going to bring these two layers together. I have a little bit of glue there. Let's move it away it'll dry, and it'll also dry clear. It's so spooky. Oh, also, the other thing you can do is you can put little hands in here. Let's pick another color of felt. I need bigger scrap. So you can sandwich little hands in here. And unfortunately, I don't have purple felt. Otherwise, I could do little purple hands. Cut some hands. They're like little mittens, basically. We'll cut the general shape first, and then go in and cut the thumb. If you can do more than that, if your scissors are sharp enough, go ahead. The skeleton has a genetic anomaly of only four fingers on each hand. So we have some working time. I would put a little bit more tacky glue now that we're adding um, the hands just because the tacky glue started to absorb into the felt. And what would be really awesome is if I had some puffy paint. Phil's suggesting wrapping clothes then Oh, oh my God, Phil, I was just thinking the same thing. We're on the same wavelength. Phil said, wrap a clothespin doll in twine and make a mummy. Absolutely. Or you could get cheesecloths because you can get that during, I mean, you can get that at the grocery store, but you can also definitely get that during the holiday season for Halloween because black cheesecloth is out for Halloween and dirty looking cheesecloth and you can paint your cheesecloth. And when are you coming to the States so we can make those together? Okay. I'm going to just... Uh, the other thing that's cool about felt is you can kind of like stretch it. So now he has giant monster hands. And I'm just going to put like some little markings like bones. This doesn't write that well on the felt, but puffy paint would work even better. What else? You could add little sequin buttons down the front of this if you have really tiny ones. Or actual buttons if you had really tiny ones of those as well. We'll just do one button for now. Oop, I had a double layer of sequins there. He's kind of like glammy scarecrow skeleton. Now, I don't necessarily think this is the best look for this particular one, but I did want to show you that you can use your micron pen to just do some patterns and create like leggings. So you could play with doing that. Um, like I said, once you've painted the wood, then your pen is not going to feather like it would otherwise. Jean says he needs a top hat. <sighs> Jean says he needs a top hat. You're probably right, Jean. How am I going to make that? I don't even have any black. Okay, we'll make him a gray top hat. I'm being challenged. All right, little top hat. Do a little bit of a square. He's going to look like Abraham Lincoln come back from the dead. <laughs> and he needs like a little to be like that, but that's too tall. So it's kind of something like that as a top hat. I don't know if this is really going to set up enough during the live shoot. So what I'll do is I'll glue this. You could put a pin in it, or in our case, I'm just going to add a little bit of washi tape and I can take it off once it's dry. So washi tape that just so that it stays. <laughs> so, I mean, you could leave it like this too. This also needs to be glued. And in a perfect world, I would also make a tiny circle to sit on top of that. That's also going to be a little bit tricky. Thank you, Jean, for the recommendation of the top hat. Oh, a sequin could maybe work. Let's see. 
Yeah, it's kind of the same size. Well, why don't we do a sequin that's going to set up a little bit quicker than the felt on felt. You'll notice that the tip of your tacky glue is going to get really gummed up with all the little felt fibers and you can just wipe that away with a baby wipe. Perfection. Let's also just put a big glob of glue there to put our He's like Willy Wonka skeleton now. He's very fabulous. We're not going to put any hair on him because he's a skeleton. <laughs> and clearly there are rules here. <laughs> it's starting to feel like a Faith Live shoot. <laughs> oh my God, he's so cute. <laughs> Look, they're going to go to a party <laughs> together. She has to be on this side because her hair goes that way. Oh, my God, I have my Halloween costume. Here we go. Doo -doo -doo. Okay, uh, you would be. this would be so cool as a bat, you know, if we just did some, like, things. What else does this guy need? The point of this also is that, like, right now he's wearing this awesome, like, tunic, but if you wanted to, you can also just trim down because you've glued everything. That's the point of gluing both those layers. So that, that's feeling a little better. Now it's like the Sonia Philip tunic. And there's all kinds of things you could add. We've got ribbon. I could glue this um, here to make like little pants. Let's do that. And then I feel like he'll be close to being done. So I didn't like his pattern tights because I really probably wouldn't put that with this particular outfit. I'm like thinking about when I was too old to play with Barbies and it was like a lot of judging about what they were wearing. And you're like, no, that doesn't go together. And that's kind of when you realize like, you know, I'm probably a little too old to play with these. Okay, so right now you'll see some of that glue because this is a transparent ribbon but it'll dry clear and we're using I love these um, titanium scissors by Scotch because they're anti-sticky so you can cut through things that have been glued and things that have tape and it won't come up your scissors oh my god his pants look fabulous that ribbon happened to be the perfect width and I didn't plan that I love it when that happens You can also use a toothpick instead of your finger to help you spread your glue. More of this really cool ribbon. Now I'm thinking of all the different things I could make. I could make the mummy, I could make a Frankenstein. Oh, his hat is getting, I'm being too aggressive with my gluing. You could make a gingerbread man for the holidays. There's all kinds of things you could do. Oh my God, he's so cute. Let's just fix it so that the front, you can't really see that orange. You could go back in once the glue is dry and do some touch-up paint or some black micron so that his pants look like really, really finished. Let's see if I can take this off. Yeah, it's pretty good. He needs a very tiny feather in that top hat. Let's cut one. Using some paper. This will be the tiniest feather I've ever made out of paper. We're going to fold it in half. I don't need to be that long. Okay, these are the biggest scissors to make the tiniest thing ever out of paper. Cut a leaf shape. And then I like to put the fold on the left side and very carefully not cut through this. Open it out. 
ruffle up its edges so it looks like a little feather. And then we're going to add him with a little bit of tacky glue. Okay, done. They're ready for the Halloween ball. Done. <laughs> Do you have any other questions? Oh, wait, they could be carrying a pumpkin. He could be carrying a pumpkin. I'm not going to make a pumpkin right now. Maybe later. Nicolette is watching from Greece, even though they don't have Halloween there. Hi, Nicolette. Sounds like you're watching from Greece. Apparently, there's no Halloween in Greece. I feel like it's a very American holiday, although I know it has gone to some other countries, but with less fervor, perhaps. Um, it's my actually my favorite holiday, so even though we've been doing Christmas all week long here in the Creative Bug Studio, trees right behind me, I've been thinking about Halloween the entire time because that's what I'm most excited for. So, of course, um, that clothespins are the first like kind of Halloween craft that I've made, but I'm super excited to make more. Thank you so much for joining us on the live shoot, and we will see you next week for our next live shoot. Thank you.